In the Warhammer 40,000 universe, there are no fiercer foes to the enemies of mankind than the Black Templars. Through their unyielding faith, the Black Templars fight with a zeal and determination that makes them feared throughout the galaxy. With their fanatical devotion to the Emperor, the Black Templars have waged war against the Mutant, the Heretic, and the Xenos in an unending crusade for 10,000 years. With their intimidating black armor and their warrior knight aesthetic, Black Templars are among the most popular Space Marine factions, despite not even being among the original first founding chapters. You're watching Eric's Hobby Workshop, and in this video, as I work on my Black Templars army, I'm going to show you why the Black Templars are the coolest Space Marines in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. I've been collecting Black Templars for a few years now, but what recently inspired me to work on my army is some incredible work by Jake Spur, who posts under the name Breach and Brush on Instagram. He posted a Ballistus Dreadnought in Black Templar colors, and I thought it looked so cool that I ended up doing something I usually don't do. I mostly copied his paint scheme, and made this Ballistus Dreadnought here. I'm really pleased with how it turned out, and although mine's not entirely finished and probably doesn't look as good as Jake's, it got my juices flowing again in a big way. I started thinking about expanding my army, and before long, I'd assembled some Sternguard veterans, an Infernus squad, and some Sword Brethren to add to my force. For a long while, I've had a very specific hobby-related fear that's made me avoid having miniatures made by other people in my collection. It might sound silly, but this is my worry. Somebody's looking at my collection, with the hundreds of models I've painted over the years, and they zero in on one of the few that I didn't paint and say it's their favorite one. That would be emotional damage I don't think I could handle. But when Jake posted on Instagram saying he was taking a slot for a commission, I decided to hell with it, and I messaged him. Here's what he made me. This is the Black Templar's Castellan, one of many unique Black Templar's kits available in the current range. Jake did a molten metal effect on the axe, which I think looks insanely cool. More than anything, I got this piece because I wanted to see his work in person. It was both motivational and humbling at the same time. Jake has incredible brush control, and the edge highlights in particular are beautifully crisp. But at the same time, I'm really happy to report that it fits in well with my army. Now one of the clear reasons why Black Templars are so popular is their color scheme. In previous videos, I've talked at length about the classic painting of the Black Templars from the 3rd edition rulebook by the legendary John Blanche. It utilizes the Zorn palette, which is a simple palette of four colors, red, ochre, white, and black, and the limited color gamut gives an intense foreboding to the aesthetic. The Grimdark aesthetic has had a huge influence on the style and tone of Warhammer as a whole, and with Black Templars perfectly fitting this scheme, there's much to be said for how this color scheme communicates the dystopian gothic feeling of the Imperium of Man. It's a visual representation of a universe scarred by endless war, and it fits perfectly. But beyond this artistic analysis, there's something more basic and fundamental that makes the Black Templar's color scheme so popular. And for lack of a better way of putting it, it's as simple as, black is the most badass color. And I think at some level we all instinctively know this to be true. There's a reason why all the coolest characters wear black. In the world of marketing, color associations and how they make you subconsciously feel is a fairly widely studied topic. Blue is associated with trust, security, and dependability, for example. Many corporate brands take advantage of this. It says, trust us with your money, or our cars are dependable, or we won't do anything malicious with your data. Green is associated with freshness and nature and prosperity. And red apparently makes you hungry, which is why pretty much every fast food logo uses it. But black, black is the color of power and authority. That's why often black is used by luxury brands like Chanel. It's authoritative, it's serious, it's the color worn by SWAT teams, priests, and judges. And what do you get when you combine a SWAT team, a priest, and a judge? You get the Black Templars, basically. So I've been painting up some Terminators for my army, and the black armor just makes them feel so solid and foreboding. I can almost hear their heavy footsteps as they advance relentlessly. Black also has the effect of allowing the areas of contrast that you want to bring attention to to really pop and draw your eye. I used a white helmet to accentuate this effect, and applied red transfers on the shoulder pads here. Of course, you have to drill your gun barrels, so here's a tip for how to get an accurate hole. First, use a push pin to make a pilot hole before drilling. It's much easier to center the hole this way. 
Now, you may be saying to yourself that there are other well-known Space Marine factions that wear black, and you'd be right. The Iron Hands and the Raven Guard are also both predominantly black in their color scheme, and there are an infinite amount of successor chapters that you could play with to make up your own color scheme. So what makes the Black Templars special? The difference is, the Black Templars have a style and aesthetic that takes their image as cold and unrelenting warrior zealots to the next level. The very name, the Black Templars, is derived from the Knights Templar, a mysterious and powerful order of knights who were founded during the Crusades, taking their name from the Temple of King Solomon. They became one of the most powerful forces in Europe, until King Philip of France, who was wary of their power and influence, conspired with Pope Clement and ordered the seizure of their assets and the arrest of the Templars. Among others, the Grand Master Jacques de Molay was burnt in 1314 at the stake as a heretic, and the order was formally dissolved. He reportedly asked to be tied with his hands facing so he could pray to Notre Dame Cathedral and cursed his accusers as he burnt, and within a year, both Pope Clement and King Philip were dead as well. Possibly a coincidence, but damn, I mean what a cool story. The point is, the very word Templars conjures images of a formidable warrior order, secretive and mysterious, tied in with the very highest levels of intrigue from the church and the king. The Black Templars derive their white surcoats and Maltese cross from a similar order, the Teutonic Knights, which reinforces the medieval aesthetic. What this means for hobbyists is that a wealth of medieval and gothic imagery perfectly fits the Black Templars. Take for example the chaplain Grimaldus, a special character for the Black Templars. He has a knightly tabard, which is of course a Black Templar's signature, but also candles, and a relic hand clutching a broken blade, and a cross insignia that makes him look like a walking shrine. This is the official model for Grimaldus that I only made with a few modifications, but you can see how this visual language is a kitbasher's dream. Now let me show you guys something really cool. My friend, who posts by the name Kitbash Powerhead on Instagram, sent me this kitbashed Black Templar Chaplain in Terminator armor that he made. This thing is absolutely insane. The base of this kitbash is this awesome skull head taken from the Death Company Dreadnought kit. And with a host of tiny rivets and bits from other kits, he's made this absolutely gorgeous walking tank, ready to smite the Emperor's foes. I'm going to attempt to do this incredible mini justice with my paint job, so let's see how that goes. I start by priming the model black, and with the model all in one color now, I can really get a sense for the shapes and volumes that I'm dealing with. I paint over the armor surfaces in the model black anyways, just so my later brushwork is guaranteed to match the armor. Now the challenge that this mini presents is that because there are so many cool gothic details, there will be a lot of things competing for the eye's attention. I decided to try to manage this issue by being very conservative with my values. I'll reserve my brightest highlights for areas that I want the eye to be drawn to. Naturally, this is the face of the mini, and although I want the cloak to read as sort of a creamy tan color, areas like in behind the model are actually painted quite dark, which should frame the model nicely. I paint the skull face and the bones in the relic above with quite a dark tan as well, slowly layering up highlights. I'm really trying to make the volume stand out, so I imagine the light source coming from the upper right. I paint the outside of the cloak a rich, dark red by mixing the eventual color I want with black. A lot of people say you shouldn't mix colors with black for shadows, but I'm deliberately creating a desaturated look here. This will allow me to draw further attention to specific areas with saturation later. I use a cold, pale, brassy tone on the relic above for the same reason. As I highlight the face, you can see the look that I'm trying to achieve start to come out. Framed by that black rim, the near white highlight on the face really draws your eye. I start sketching in chunky red highlights on the cape as well, and you can see the saturation is really starting to come through. Placement of highlights on a complex shape like this is something I still haven't totally mastered. But as they say, there's only one way to get to Carnegie Hall. I add some bright highlights to the tabard on the top of this guy's leg, as well as on his torso in the center. This is again all about bringing attention to the center of the mini so that it reads well. For that same reason, I use a quite dark metallic paint to paint the metallic chains and other bits. I'm a member of the Army Painter Factory team, so I'm using Army Painter Fanatic paints for this. They sent me the entire range and there's a huge amount of tones and colors, but ironically that doesn't stop me from mixing them to create even more tones and colors. Recently, my teammate Sam Lenz absolutely cleaned up at Adepticon with pieces painted with these same paints, winning a Silver Demon, two Resin Beast categories, Path of the Worthy by Atomic Mass Games, and P3 Grandmasters by Privateer Press. 
Now, I may never be as good a painter as Sam, but it's nice to know it's possible. These large tilting shields on either side of this guy's head are going to have a white background, but I don't want them to steal all the attention, so I use a grey instead. It'll still read as white in the context of the mini, but a darker white, if that makes sense. The base of this mini is a crazy custom piece as well, shaped like a Maltese cross covered in rubble. And I start by painting it tan with a bunch of reddish hues wet blended in. I of course am drawing some inspiration from the Blanche painting, where the marines are all standing on a cream colored ruin in the reddish dust. I define some of the metallics with strong tone, and pick out a bunch of the stud details with the dark metallic. Now, I'm not painting this guy for competition, and it may not win any awards, but goddamn, I think this is looking incredible, and I'm really proud of this guy. Hell yeah. One thing I love to do when I've painted a miniature is add a magnet to their base to make them easier to transport and store. Now, if you're in the market for magnets, there's no finer purveyor of magnets than the sponsor of this video, the Magnet Baron. The Magnet Baron has loads of different sizes and shapes of magnets at great prices, and their website is tailor-made for wargamers to find the right magnets for the exact use cases they need. The magnets are really strong and high quality. Watch this. You can shake, you can go upside down, your minis won't budge. So head over to themagnetbaron.com and tell them I sent you. Now back to the video. Probably my biggest weakness as a miniature painter is that I never seem to finish my pieces to a high level all over. Part of this is because I'm constrained by YouTube deadlines and an attention span that can only be measured in nanoseconds. But I will say this, one thing that my short deadlines and even shorter attention span have gotten me is that I can paint things pretty well, really quickly. And since a lot of you are busy, I think this is a useful skill to have. So let me share some of that with you. Now back when I was a kid, I remember opening a white dwarf one day and seeing the Land Raider Crusader, an incredible kit that seemed tailor-made for the Black Templars. Now, I only played Warhammer Fantasy back then, but it still grabbed my interest even then. Now, in recent years, I was able to get one of these kits, and I think it still looks as awesome as it did back then. Now, last year I made a video about how to paint tanks, and one of the most frequent questions in the comments was how do you paint a black tank? So this seems like the perfect time to show you a quick method to do that. Now, usually when I assemble a tank, I try to leave as many parts movable as possible. It makes it easier to pew pew around with them on the table, and it's a nice touch. But this Crusader's Hurricane bolters are made from metal, and their weight makes them swing around wildly in their sockets. So I added a dab of glue to keep them in place. Now the tank is already primed, but I start by spraying the whole thing black with my airbrush anyways. Painting black is often considered challenging, because it's easy to go overboard and have it look grey, and if you don't go far enough, there's no definition and it looks unpainted. I'm going to show you a quick method to get the best of both worlds. Using an airbrush, I start by adding a very subtle grey highlight to the lower portion of the tank, and I try to catch some of the sharper edges with a bit of grey. The effect is very subtle at this point, but it'll make the tank look more interesting in the end. It gets lighter towards the ground to represent the reflected light off the ground, and it'll give it a subtle, realistic look. Now once I have a decent gradient, I apply a bit of black back to the darkest areas, and at upward angle, making sure the darkest black is still the dominant color. Next, I'm going to apply a few transfers. The simple white Maltese cross is the best, I think, for the simple effect I'm going for. Maximum contrast. Nice. I put those on with micro set solution, and then give them two or three layers of micro sol. You gotta be patient here. But it's dead easy. Now with those dry, I'm going to apply some weathering with a dark reddish brown. This is going to read as edges that have chipped and rusted, and we'll add some subtle color variation. I follow that with a bright silver, sponging the edges sparingly, but hitting it harder around the tracks in the bottom. I pick out a few of the lenses in a nice rich gradient of red, and pick out some of the metallic details in dark silver. Then I hit it with a generous coat of matte varnish. What, did you think there was going to be more steps? I told you it was going to be a quick method. I think if for what it is, it looks tremendous though. The silver chips define the edges without having to painstakingly highlight all those long straight edges. I think it looks phenomenal, solid, intimidating, and it was dead easy to paint. So as you can see, my Black Templar's Crusade Force is coming together nicely. I hope this video has given you guys a glimpse into why Black Templars are so cool, and why they continue to capture the imagination of so many players and hobbyists. Thank you guys for watching, and a huge thank you to my Patreon patrons. If you join now, you can get access to our Discord server, 
behind the scenes vlogs, exclusive promo codes, and more. Speaking of which, the Army Painter has given me a promo code I can share with you guys to get 5% off all their products. I'll put that on the screen here. If you join my Patreon though, you can get a top secret patron only promo code that gives you a whopping 10% off. Thanks for tuning in guys, we'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.